G'day everybody, welcome back to my little channel. In today's episode, I'm finally gonna get around to finishing off that T4 bus project that I've been doing for my family. So apologies to my mother and my wife, they hate the workshop videos. But anyway, I'll show you how I repaired the front fenders and then paint it underneath with a few coats of paint. And I'll even show you how an Australian applies German body cavity wax underneath. That went pretty well. Some tips for you if you wanna know how to do it. Anyway, let's get on with the show, eh? Before we can really get started, I just have to explain to you that there's two different fronts on these T4 buses. There's the long nose type, like we have, and there's the short nose, or the commercial front, which is the type that I bought the fender replacement sections for, thinking that the wheel lip and the air vent section was the same. But there's a difference in the height of the bumper bars, which I will show you, and then we'll work out how to fix it. Okay, so back to the job at hand. This is how the fenders started out looking. A lot of rust around that wheel arch lip, which they all have, and as well as underneath the vent on the right hand side. So I'll just assess the situation and clean it up, and then work out just how different the short nose Volkswagen fenders are to the long nose. Uh, there's quite a few differences, more than I realized. So there's a little bit more modifying to do than what I first thought when I thought I'll save a few dollars and buy the cheaper parts. But that's how it usually works out, isn't it? You try and save a buck and you get bit in the ass. A poor man always pays twice, so they say. But it started off by cleaning everything up, getting rid of all the paint and finding out where the good metal ends and the rusty metal starts. And that means I can work out how far I need to cut this out and how much of the new panel I need to use. I'm also just measuring there as to how it's going to fit because there is a length difference height wise where the bumper bar sits. So just cut off the bits that don't look like a long nose T4 and replace them with bits that do look like a long nose T4 and as you can see the bumper bars actually mount differently on the bottom of the fender so I had to completely remake that by hand as of course I had the wrong component. Don't need that bit, get rid of that. And as you can see, as I overlay the new section off of the short nose T4 over the long nose T4 fender, you can see I've got the numbers 131 written. That's the measurement from my datum point to the bottom. And the short nose T4 is about 151, 20 millimeters lower. So I had to reshape the bottom of the fender underneath the vent to be 20 millimeters higher. Not a big job, didn't take too long, but if you know all these things, you don't fall into these traps, but like I said, tried to save a buck, um, and there you go. So you can see me now just moving that bottom edge on the new section of fender up higher, closer to the vent, to allow the bumper bar to sit in the right spot. And there you go, that's with the bottom lip moved up 20 millimeters higher, and now just a bit of a test fit. Bob's your auntie. Now start stitching in position, of course getting it perfectly level between the two panels the whole way along. And I want the stitches to end up about 13 millimeters or half an inch apart. And then I weld it off piece by piece, four stitch welds at a time and blown off by the air to cool it down. And then four stitch welds and blow it off with the air. I don't know if any of you guys are fans of the YouTube channel Bad Chad, that's his theory and uh, I wouldn't want to upset him by putting five or six stitches on. Just keeps the, the panel cooler and stops the warping, or reduces the warping at least anyway. So it's easier to finish and get looking a lot smoother and neater, requiring less bog or spactal or filler, whichever part of the world you're from. There you go, it's pretty time consuming, but as you can see, I'm pretty quick, eh? Look at that. And then of course, once it's all finished, you can grind it and plenish it. Um, that's one thing that will annoy bad Chad, sorry Chad, is that I grind it flush to the outside. 
he likes to leave a bit of a lip and put a bit of bondo over the top but I prefer to take it down flat and making sure that it's got a full penetration weld and a bead on the inside to retain its strength. And then yeah, with a bit of grinding, planishing, sanding, you end up with something that looks a bit like this. Not perfect, I know. There's people out there that are far more professional than I, and you can probably let me know about that in the comments if you like. But look at that. Blind man would be happy to see that. Now that both the front fenders have been repaired, it's time to assemble the bus enough for it to be moved to the paint shop. Of course, the most important thing before you move the bus is to install the windscreen washer bottle. Then, let her down off the jacks, and back her off the blocks. And oh, look at that! All those old bits of T4 on the floor! Better dispose of that evidence. Before I drop the bus to the paint shop, I want to put two really good coats of paint underneath. I know, I know, it's a bit bodgy driving the bus on a kitchen chair, isn't it? Well, you have to take into account the fact that they don't have milk crates in Germany, so I had to settle for a kitchen chair. I mean, how can you have a workshop without milk crates? The humble milk crate has thousands of uses. There's stabilisation and propping, elevation, scientific and durability testing, just to mention a few. Right, so up on the hoist for the first time in quite a while and get it ready to paint underneath. But hang on, what's this? It's a spot I've missed and there's another bloody hole. Alright, out with the welder and the wire wheel before the paint can go on. Perfect! Job that just keeps on giving. So another day or two or three later of cleaning and welding and finalising little details under the bus, I was finally ready to paint. So that's three coats of the offshore paint and let it dry. Then to make room in the workshop, I assembled most of the interior of the bus. And then it was time to drop it off at the painters, where it had a T3 to keep it company. And then on my walk back from the painters to my workshop, I discovered this on the footpath. Hmm, I can't see a safety issue here, can you? Footpath, tractor, spikes, eyeball height. That's just what you want, isn't it? Walking your dog or looking at your iPhone and uh, poke your eyeball out on a hay fork. Good work. Some considerable time later, this is the finished result. Turned out pretty good, didn't it? Look at that. A place for everything and everything in its place. And yes, I know I shouldn't have put the interior in before it went to the paint shop, but for those people who don't live and work in Europe, space is very valuable here and workshops are quite small. So it's annoying fumbling things back and forth, back and forth, up and down, in and out of the way, shuffling things around to make space. So it's easier just to give the interior a bit of a spruce up once the car's assembled again, just to save the space in the workshop while the bus is at the paint shop. Just putting the T4 family bus back together and I've had a bit to do with these T4s over the years now considering we've got one in Europe and one in Australia and quite often with all European vehicles there's always an electrical glitch or something that just works intermittently or just stops and all the experts say just check the loom and the plugs and um, before you do anything else and this is what you're faced with. Look at that, would you? That's 
what the Germans call a loom. I'd call it a fucking explosion in a spaghetti factory, but uh, you know, all that that pops back up in there for convenience when you when you're not chasing a, an electrical fault. Yeah, how's that, eh? European cars, best in the world. <laughs> all right, the T4's back from the paint shop. I've over the week had a few hours here and there to come in and. Um, Put the doors and stuff on just so they're not sitting around and getting damaged and now i'm just going to give it an extra couple of coats of the the black bronox offshore paint underneath just to make sure that i never have to do this again hopefully so yeah i'll set up the time lapse and you can have a laugh at me covering myself in black paint go she's all blacked out for the third coat underneath um there is a couple of other little spots that i want to do again another coat but yeah i don't think i even got too black on my face this time yeah usually i cover myself in black paint so it was a a win-win so another week or so to let that black paint dry underneath and i figured i better get on with cleaning up the rear bumper bar slash tow bar and getting a coat of paint or three or four on that too. And now for the final assembly. Just check the gaps, make sure nothing touches the first time I close it. Wouldn't you hate that? Take the paint off the edge. And just when you thought she'd had enough coats underneath, another couple of coats of the bitumen based underbody deadener, which is sort of like a self healing coat. It helps with the stone chips and things if the paint or if the coating does get damaged by a stone or something. In the hot weather it melts back across and covers up the damage. Just really want to keep the water out of this undercarriage so I really don't want to have to do this job again. So the last thing to do is to put the body cavity wax in inside all the chassis rails and the bottoms of the sill panels and bottoms of the doors in the wheel arch lips everywhere that moisture can sit uh, and this also self heals so in the summertime it gets hot and runs down into all the seams really keeps the moisture out but on this particular day it was had a bit of a cold snap and the tip had blocked with a bit of solidified wax which I usually put in a bucket of hot water but for some reason the landlord had the water turned off so this was the next best alternative just put a bit of heat on there with a flamethrower no, she's still blocked. A bit more heat. Make sure you get the flame right down in that box where the flammable wax is. Give it another blow. No, it's still blocked. Bloody hell. Give it another hit. Get right into it this time. Make sure she's still on fire, then hit the switch. No, alright, she didn't ignite. Mustn't be flammable. Here we go. Give it a good go this time. I'm sick of this shit. Whoop, there we go. That's how you do it put that down there I'll sort this out there you go she's working well now get a rag put that on top here the rags a bit small but anyway we'll give it a go there you go look at that now just stamp it a little bit you have to stamp it a bit more it'll go out just give it a stomp like that that's it stomp it like a rhinoceros on the Serengeti plains and there you go job's done and give it a test. Beautiful. Off you go. Now you stick the end inside every hole you can find in the chassis rail, seal panel, everything underneath. Put it right up in there. Give it a good squirt. Pull it out slowly. Make sure you get a good coat of wax. Give us a 360 degree spray inside that rail. And then when you're done, put it back in and go the other way. And then when you're done that, put it back in and do it again. 
and just keep doing it in every hole you can find and make sure she's got a good coat. There she goes, coming out the top. You know you've got a good coat there when she's coming out the end. And there you go, that brings this project to an end. There she is, in all her glory, out in the sunshine. It's already got a bit of dirt on it and bird crap, but it's been a long project. About 360 hours, and it turns out looking just about exactly the same as it did before I started, but with a few less rust bubbles around the wheel arches. But it should keep the family happy for many years to come. And then while filming the dirty bus and the nice sunshine in the backyard, while we're getting ready to go out for a family outing, the neighbour started up a real car. Listen to that. I've never actually seen it. I hear him started up on a Sunday, but he's usually gone by the time I can get to the fence. I'm pretty sure it's a modern Camaro. It's nice to hear a real car for a change in Europe. Well there you go, eh? That's the end of the bus repair series. Hopefully you got something out of it, and hopefully I earned some brownie points out of it from the family, eh? So there you go. If you liked what you've seen, if you could give me the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, that would really help me out to get this channel going eventually. Don't know what I'll do with it, but it'll get it going anyway. So maybe just push those buttons for me and make an idiot happy. Thanks for watching guys and girls, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. Cheers!